It is brand new subrails for uh, Roadster pickup. These subrails are the same as Roadster 2829. Um, 3031 is different. So I love this um, long uh, rule. And what I'm doing is I'm put up, I'm going to get the measurement on the back hole, the back uh, cowl mount hole from the center. Uh, so I'm putting this on the one in the center of the hole. And again, the reason I like these rules, these metal rules, is they lay flat across the frame. And now I'm going to the other side and I'm getting the distance center to center of these holes, which turns out to be, turns out to be like 33 and a quarter, but we're going to subtract the one because we held it off on the one. So the distance between this rear hole center to center is 32 and a quarter. So I went over here, I drew a straight line on this piece of plywood. Go so straight line from end to end. Okay, drew that. Then I made a center line. So with the center line, I took the framing square. And I squared that line, and I shot that line down, down here, coming back. Shot that line down the end of the board. So you may not be able to see it too good, but there it is. We're going to need this later. I'll show you why. Okay, so I got my center line, and I got my square line. So what I did is I took a transfer punch, transfer punch, and I punched, I took half of uh, 32 and a quarter, and I marked it here. So half of 32 and a quarter, and then the other half of 32 and a quarter. And this, from this transfer punch mark to this punch mark is 32 and a quarter. So that represents the center to center line on the mounting hole on the front of the subrail. All right, so one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is because I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I was going to do this job. So uh, here was one of the challenges. Was, and this is a piece of the subrail. So when you buy, when I bought the subrail, I got Roadster subrails. And the reason is that Roadster and Roadster pickup from here forward are identical. So I got the road, Roadster subrails, and these are the cutoffs. So when I got those subrails and I put them on the table, if you look at it, it uh, it doesn't lay flat on the table, so this is not flat. So I determined that I needed to assemble this subrail assembly upside down because this is flat, and every Model A that I've ever seen had this part flat. All right, so like I said, these subrails are not flat when you put them, uh, when you put them like this. Okay, so I determined that I needed to build this thing upside down. So what I did is I had these four pieces. Right now it's all together, but I'm showing you how I did it. And I want to reiterate that I used the second hole. Okay, so what I did was I get that. I took this piece, this one piece, and I put it flat. And I took that transfer punch, and I found that hole. And I centered that, I centered that hole. Okay. Then I went over here and took this piece 
and centered this hole. So I got this hole centered, centered with a transfer punch. So I had these both sitting here with the fronts in the correct place. Center line go and the whole deal. Okay. So then I needed, what I needed next was a measurement in the back. So I took the old subrail, and this is it. Let me get some light on the subject. So this is the subrail that was in the car. And it was nasty. It's all, it's all hacked. It's all uh, scabbed onto all these parts. But anyway, it had information. So what I did is I measured from this point here. I measured from that point there to the same point on the other side. And this is the rear of the body of the Roadster pickup. So then I went to my table and I took that measurement. I, if I remember correctly, it was 41 and 1 8, but I don't remember for sure. And this is the type of thing where you want to have some buddies or you want to have someone like me that's taking that apart. So I drew some lines and I lined it all up. And that way I knew where these two rails needed to be because the front. The front was lined up. The front was the correct width uh, or distance apart. Then I took some pieces of half inch plywood and I stuck them in this space. So I got that space under there. So I stuck the half inch plywood here. I made sure I was in the right place and I clamped. And I clamped that down. And I got this in the right place. So I, with the width of the back, I, I cut it in half. Here's my center line. I put my line here. I had the front clamp in place. So then I had this, so I was able to clamp. I was able to clamp here. So this surface here of the subrail uh, is nice and flat, the way it's supposed to be. So then, I clamped this side, obviously. So then I took my cross rails and I began to cut them. So what I did is I cut it off, but I let, left this little flap. So I have a flap that I folded and I was able to, uh, you know, shape it to match this angle. And I did that on both sides. I got my measurement. I cut it up. I got it to fit nice. Cool. Then with this one, this one has a step in it. So what I did is I cut a notch out of here and I bent that up and I got this and, and naturally I cut it to length. And then I wound up welding in this piece. So I made a piece here, welded it in, and then I was able to, I was able to uh, rivet it, rivet it to this part of the crossway. So I got a rivet gun years ago, do Model A parts, and I finally used it. Now the, the subrail didn't fit perfectly. So I wound up rolling a step in there on my bead roller. So I'm, I don't know if you can see that. So that sat too high. When I, when, I, when I put this bottom one, clamped the bottom one together, there was a gap here. So I bead rolled the step in here to push this down so that it fit nice and naturally. And I wound up doing that to all four all four of those tabs. So what I did is I got the whole thing together when it was upside down, and I determined where I was going to drill these holes, and I drilled the one eighth inch hole, and I used Clecos.
So I wound up using Clecos to uh, hold the whole thing together. So these are called Clecos. So um, when you have information like the old uh, the old subrail, you want to uh, set you want to save this kind of junk because it it has information. I got a lot of information. I got where to drill these holes. Okay, so you got those, those are the original holes. I made a pattern as to where those rivets are gonna go. So the smaller holes are rivets, and the bigger holes are the two big uh, mounting, the mounts for the, um, the body block that holds it to the frame. So that's about it. And um, I spent, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I was going to do that. And if I have to do it again, it's going to take me a fraction of the amount of the time to do it. But uh, this is the way I did it. I had really good results. And then naturally I, put, I squared it on the frame and then I found where to uh, drill the other uh, body block mounts. So there's those body block mounts. I'm rebuilding the subrail extension. In another video, if I link it to this one, um, I call them fender extensions over and over and over and finally call them uh, subrail extensions. Uh, but these are the subrail extensions and th in this video there'll be a bunch of information about me putting them together. Roadster pickup. First of all, I've been working on this firewall. Uh, this piece was cut out, hacked out. This piece was hacked out. I welded some bunch of new stuff in. You can see it's all welded in. Um, did the patch panel. So, this is the fender extension. Uh, here's a patch that I've made. It will, uh, I put the step in it. Now, this, these fender extensions step right here. And they slide under the, uh, the subrail. And then I guess they were screwed in or the two big main body mounts hold them in. But also, um, uh, what I've done with these is I have replaced replace this piece. I cut this piece out. I welded it here to the old piece. So I welded to the old piece. I welded the old piece on the top. Welded it to the old piece on the bottom. And I welded it to the um, diagonal brace here. And I got to finish welding that up. I still got a little metal that's still got a little metal that's no good in here. But um, I'm going to use it like this anyway. It's not going to be a show car. I've got this metal all cleaned up. And this patch, this patch is ready to go. I'm going to clean the metal with acetone. So that step, there's the step. And here I'm going to wind up stepping it. I'll weld the step. Just I fit it so that that's stepped in. And now the, the bottom is step two, so this will be up here. So I'll s cut that and I'll curve that up to get a step. And uh, these are the fender extensions. Uh, excuse me, the, uh, that's Camaro. These are the subrail extensions. And we'll be welting them in. So what's happening, uh, basically, this car, I got it. I bought it in Rhode Island, and I've been doing all the patches, and you can see the back end is in really, really rough shape. So we're going to do those patches. Might have to cut it here and uh, do that whole, almost the whole side. The back bottom is pretty rough, um, but I want to uh, use it. I'm not going to go and buy the panel. So this is a rescue car. 
And I don't name cars, but I have named this one the rescue dog because we just got a rescue dog and this thing is absolutely being rescued. Here's the other side patch panel. So. This one, I cut off the bottom of a replacement panel. And this one I made out of the other half of the replacement panel. So I'll show you more of that stuff later. All right, I want to show you uh, what I found here today. Um, there's a crack, I think you can see it. Okay, this is the firewall and the cowl. And where, where the crack is is where the subrail extension was riveted to that. So that must have had some movement and stress and crack there. So luckily I was cleaning some rust off here and I found it. And uh, I, now I can weld it up. So this is the rescue dog. And uh, give me your opinion. What do you think? Should I keep the patina? So what I did, the reason I did this is because uh, this patch this way, instead of uh, replacing this whole piece, other than I'm cheap, uh, I wanted to keep the patina of the car. So the car's got all this patina, but I don't know if it makes sense. So we could do a trog car with paint on it, or we could do a rat rod. Here's the bed. And the bed is in really decent shape, except there's a ton of surface rust. There's some holes and stuff. But basically, I mean, even this pan here that, that curves is usable just the way it is. Uh, got holes in it. I mean, it's ratty. But um, what do we do? Do we paint this beast? Or do we try to save as much of this patina as possible? So here's the gas tank. And it's kind of interesting because the gas tank came off of one car. This bezel came off another car. The uh, cowl and the back and the doors came with this car. However, the doors don't look like they belong to this car because they don't have the same paint. And these subrail extensions came from this Roadster. And this Roadster got built by a pro back when I wouldn't have had the, I wouldn't have been able to do this work, but I can now. But uh, he did something totally different. So this, this car's a driver, it's all dirty, but those are homemade um, subrail extensions in there. And uh, a bitchin firewall and a, a custom floor, custom pedals, custom, um, you know, column drop. And this car was built by, uh, all these parts were done by Rick Shiretti and uh, at Rick's Custom in East Bridgewater, Mass. I think he closed his doors. He's doing something different now. But uh, there's that whole panel that I was talking about. Instead of doing the patch panel like I did on the, on the other car, I used this whole panel. And I actually have one. I lost one of them. But I actually have the original, original panels off of that 28 Roadster. So this was the color, and this is a very fixable piece. And I got a lot of information. I got information on how to make that other patch panel off of this panel. So uh, the old panels and the old junk is uh, valuable at times when you need the information. So uh, this is the rescue dog, and we're going to rebuild this whole car and get the door slamming and get all the patch panels done and get a floor in it. So we're gonna get this car running and uh, it'll be fun. It's the rescue dogs.